In the previous lectures, we have studied about the while loop, we have studied about the if and the else if statements, and we have seen the working of all those. Now, using all those things that we have studied, here we are going to write the program to count the number of consecutive inputs. That means we want to count the number of times the same input has occurred consecutively. So, let's see how we can write this program. So, first of all, let us see the way it should work. So, what we actually mean by this program is that, suppose the user inputs values like this, 10, 10, 10, 5, 5, 7, 7, 7, 7. So, we see that 10 has consecutively occurred three times, 5 has occurred consecutively two times, and 7 has occurred consecutively four times. So, it should give the output saying that 10 occurs three times, 5 occurs two times, and 7 again occurs four times. Okay, and here another example, if the user enters 1199944, it should say 1 occurs 2 times, and then 9 occurs 1, 2, 3, 3 times, and 4 occurs 1, 2, 2 times. So, we see that it has to count the number of times the input has consecutively occurred. So, remember the word consecutive. So, it has to be the consecutive number of times the input has occurred. So, that is what we want to perform here. Okay, so let us see how we can write this program using the things that we have studied so far. So, here I have the program written for you and we are going to explain each of these lines one by one to see how it is going to work. So, first of all, we have our header and the main function. So, inside the main function, here I am declaring two variables of the type integer, curveval which we will use for denoting the current value and we set it to zero in the beginning and val which is the value and we will see what it is used for. So, curveval is a number we are counting and we will read the new values into val. So, we see that we wanted to count the consecutive numbers. So, the current value that we are counting right now, that we will read into this curveval and then the new values that are going to be entered, that we will read into the variable called val. So, that is the use of these two variables. Now, we have an if statement here. Now, why are we writing this if statement? It is going to read the first number and ensure that we have data to process. So, we are writing the iStream or our C in inside this if statement and we are accepting the value that the user enters into this variable called curveval. So, what it essentially means is that we are trying to get input from the user. Now, we have to make sure that the user enters the input. So, we are writing this if statement to make sure that there is an input and it is not an end of file or an invalid value. So, as long as there is an input, we are going to start doing this. So, that is why we are writing is inside the if statement and we are going to read the first number that the user enters. So, the first number that the user enters is stored inside this curveval. Okay, now inside this if statement, we have this block starting from here till here. Okay, now we are going to see each of them one by one. So, here inside this if block, we are declaring a variable called cnt which we will call count and it is of the type integer and we initialize it to 1. Now, what is the purpose of this? This is used for counting the number of times the particular input has consecutively occurred. So, we store the count for the current value that we are processing. So, that will be stored inside this count variable. Okay, now moving on, we see that there is a while loop over here. Now, inside this while loop, the condition is again a C in and we are accepting the user input to this variable called val. Now, what is this? This is for reading the remaining numbers. So, the first number that the user entered was stored in curveval. Now, the user is going to keep on entering numbers. So, the remaining numbers will be read inside this variable called val. So, we want this loop to run as long as the user is entering some value and till it is not an end of file. So, that is why we are having this while loop to keep accepting the inputs that the user is entering. So, here we have our scene and we are taking the remaining values into this val. Okay, now let's see what happens inside this while statement. So, the while block starts from here and it ends over here. Now, inside this while, we again have an if statement. Now, what is this if statement? The if statement is checking a condition. If val is equal to equal to curveval, that means it is comparing if this val and this curveval is equal or not. Now, what is this curveval and val? So, remember, curveval was the first number the user entered. And what is val? Val is the remaining numbers. So, starting from the second number onwards, it is going to be stored in val. So, just think that we are comparing the second number and the first number. So, if they are equal, then we want to increment the count variable. So, as I already told you, count is for storing the count for the current value that we are processing. So, here it says plus plus count. 
So this is again an increment operator. So, so far in our lectures, we have seen something called variable plus plus. That means the plus plus was after the variable. So, that is the concept of pre-increment and post-increment, which we will study in detail in another lecture. But for now, just know that this is used for incrementing the value of the count variable. So, we increment the value of count. Now, why did we increment? The initial value was 1. Now, if this val and this curval is equal, that implies that the first value and the second value that the user entered are the same. So, what does that mean? That means we have two consecutive same inputs. So, at that time, we have to increase the count for us to know that this particular input has now occurred two times. Okay, so that is what is happening here. Now, if val and curve val is not the same, that means if the value that the user has entered now is not equal to the previous value, then we come to the else part. So, as I said, if the values are the same, we add one to count in order to increment our counter variable. Okay. Now, if the value that the user has entered now is not equal to the previous value that he has entered, then we come to this else part. That means, val is not equal to curve val, then we come to the else part. So, in this else part, what we are going to do is print the count for the previous value. Now, just think about it. If the current value is not equal to the previous value, that means that consecutive pattern is broken. So, we have to print how many times that previous value has occurred. So, that is what we are doing here. So, we are saying in the cout statement, curve val, that is the current value that we are processing, occurs count number of times. So, we see curve val is a current value and we are just printing this word occurs and we are printing the variable count, which was counting the number of times that variable occurred. So, we are printing it out and we are putting a new line. Okay. Now, after doing that, we have to remember what is the new value that we were processing. So, we said that the previous value and the new value was not the same. So, we have to remember the new value. So, inside this curve val, we will store the val, which is the next thing that the user has entered. Because the checking is going to happen using this val and curve val. So, curve val now becomes the new value which the user has previously entered. Okay. And then we have to set the count variable to 1 again. We have to reset the counter because now we are going to do the counting for a new number. Okay. Now, it will go back to this while. So, remember it is a while loop. So, as long as the user enters, this loop is going to run. So, it will come back to the loop. It will take the next value that the user has entered and it will again check if that value is equal to curve val. What is curve val? Curve val was the previous last value that we had. So, it is going to check again. If it is the same, it will add 1 to the counter and it will keep on doing that until and unless the user enters end of file value. So, we see that the while loop ends over here. So, inside while we were having the if and the else statements. So, we are comparing present value to the previous value and as long as they are same, the counter will be updated. And if they are not the same, then we are just printing the number of times that particular thing has occurred and then we are remembering the new value and resetting the counter and the whole process continues again. Okay, so this will keep on happening till the user enters an end of file value. Now, when the user enters an end of file value, then it will break out from the loop. And when it breaks out from the loop, then at that time, this portion is not going to be executed. So, since this portion is not going to be executed, we missed to print the count for that last value. So, in order to avoid that, we have to remember to print the count for the last value in the file. So, that is why we are writing an extra C out over here and we are saying that curve val, which is the last value that is there, occurs count number of times. So, this is to remember to print the count of the last value in the file. And I hope you understood why. Because when the user enters a end of file value, it will break from the loop and it is not going to do this for the last value that was there. So, in order to avoid that and to make sure that we print even for the last value, so we use this extra C out statement. And here, we see that the outermost if statement ends here. So, the if statement started here and it ends over here. Alright, so this is the complete program. So, just remember in a nutshell, let me repeat it again. We first check if there is something that is entered by the user. The first value is entered here. Then, we come to the while loop and then we run the loop as long as there are values and we are comparing the current value with the previous value and if they are same, we are updating the counter and then when the current value and the previous value becomes not same, then we print print out how many times the previous value was entered. So, that is the full concept of this program. So, anyway, let's go to Visual Studio Code and try to run this and see if it is working properly like we have discussed. 
So here we come to Visual Studio Code and we have this complete program written over here which we have already seen. So let me pull up this terminal and let us try to compile this program. So the file name is countcons.cpp which is the name of the file that I have given. So we compile the program by typing g++ followed by the file name and we press enter and we see that there are no errors. The program got compiled successfully. Now let's run the default output file that got generated which is a.exe. So I type dot slash a.exe and I press enter. Okay, here we see that it is waiting for the user input. So it has come to this if statement and it is waiting for my input. So I can just keep on entering the values. So the first value will be taken by this if and the remaining values will be taken using this while statement and the scene that is there inside this while. So let me enter some consecutive values. So let me enter 10, 10, 10, three times. Now let me enter four, two times and let me enter five, four times. Okay. Now I want to end this program now. So how to break from the loop? I have to enter an end of file value which is control Z or control D like we explained in one of the previous lectures. So I press control Z on my keyboard and I press enter. Now see it says 10 occurs 3 times, 4 occurs 2 times and 5 occurs 4 times. So we see that our program is working as we have planned. Okay, so that is how you can write this program. So after watching this lecture, try to write it yourself and try to experiment with it and find out what is the kind of outputs that it is going to give if you are giving different kind of inputs. So let's say that you are giving inputs where there are no consecutive values. So try that and see what is going to be the output. And try something like you have given the same consecutive values. Like for example, let's say you gave only 10 and then you run the program and then you try to execute it. So what happens at that time? So experiment with the program and try to see how this program is behaving with the different kind of inputs that you are giving. So I hope this lecture about how to write a program to count the consecutive number of inputs that are there is clear to you. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one.